without a doubt the coolest upcoming phone the most expensive craziest no one's going to be able to afford it but wow what a device the galaxy z fold 2 the official name a ton of improvements honestly in this device here's the top 10 it's all here you know everything about it right before the launch Firstly, the internal screen is getting bigger, up from 7.3 inches, now 7.59 inches, and a slight difference to the aspect ratio as well. It's just getting a little bit wider. Now, if you look at the original Galaxy Fold, the screen was, well, really taking up the whole internal display. There isn't really much that you can do, but Samsung have obviously just taken things to the next level, reduced the bezel sizes a little bit in there, and of course, the uh, selfie camera on the inside has changed as well. So let's talk about that notch. And whilst you can sort of understand Samsung putting in the notch last time, well, that's gone now, which is fantastic because it just means the screen real estate, the screen to body ratio taking a big bump up. And now you just have a single camera in there in a cutout. Apparently Samsung were pushing to use an under display camera for the first time. That technology though, just not ready for this product. Maybe ready for next year, but certainly not ready in time for a product that's in production already. Why the slightly odd position of this camera unit? Because it does look slightly odd. It's not really on the side where you'd expect it to be. So if you look at the device in its entirety, actually this is the only place for it because on the outside and the other side, there are other components. And so this is really the only place they can fit that selfie camera component. And if you actually line it up with the cameras on the original Galaxy Fold, it lines up perfectly. So you can see what they've done. They've kept the selfie camera in exactly the same place, but they've just taken away that huge notch. 120 Hertz is coming to the Galaxy Fold 2, according to Ross Young anyway, and this is, wow, just a great spec. So 120 Hertz is coming into phones, but a foldable phone with a 120 Hertz screen, that is a really great thing and definitely worthy. This is an expensive phone, but that is some really high-end hardware. So according to Ross Young, this screen panel is actually an LTPS screen panel, which is a brand new type of backplane technology. And so it is actually much more power efficient. Most phones, especially with re high refresh rates these days, so I'm thinking the OnePlus 8 Pro, even the S20 series, they use LTPS backplanes. Well, this new LTPO type of technology is apparently more energy efficient overall. So even with the 120 Hertz display, and it's a big display as well, you'd think, well, that's gonna draw a lot on the battery. With this new tech, maybe 15, even 20% less draw on the battery. So same size battery, but an, a better feature overall. So definitely a good thing having LTPO. Samsung will also be using something called UTG for the display or ultra thin glass. So this is for the foldable display on the inside. UTG is the same thing that they used for the Galaxy Z Flip and it is really glass but shards of glass just in one of the layers of the screen and what this will attempt to do is try and just make it slightly harder to the touch to make it feel as a screen slightly more like you'd get on a normal phone. Now the problem for this is they do need to put a polymer material over the UTG and that's why the actual material will feel a little bit softer, almost like plastic. This is something that they have to do and is a decision that they made. It's exactly the same as the Galaxy Z Flip, so you should be seeing really more or less the same type of screen, the same feel, the same look as the Galaxy Z Flip onto the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Because they used UTG, apparently they can't use an S Pen on there. And apparently this is because maybe some tests that they did with the S Pen and the UTG and the current glass technology, because it is foldable, uh, they just can't use the S Pen with this. And a lot of people were hoping that the S Pen would be coming in this device because it just makes total sense to have an S Pen with a tablet type of device. This is part of the Note series kind of, because it is launching with them. An S Pen would be perfect, but it looks like this year they decided not to do that. Probably more than one reason. The screen, yes, but maybe the cost and the design as well. You would assume in the future, you're gonna get an S Pen with this device. It just goes hand in hand, you would say. But for this one, the Z Fold 2, no S Pen coming, according to the leaks anyway. 
A huge and very noticeable upgrade is going to be the outer screen. And this was definitely one of the areas where you looked at it and thought, yeah, that screen is kind of out of place. And maybe at the time it was a first gen product and you think, well, okay, you have a massive screen in the, in the inside and the outside is just for notifications. But definitely that has changed this time. That kind of weird aspect ratio, small screen on the outside, is just completely gone and it's pretty much going to be a full display on the outside which you really can't ask more than that. The screen size is going to go from 4.6 inches to 6.3 inches just a completely different screen on the outside. It will essentially just feel like a normal phone. Yes a thicker phone with a second phone underneath because it's folded but you can use the Galaxy Fold 2 basically as a normal phone when it is folded in half and use the outer screen as you would like an S20 or a Note 20 device. There's also a huge change in the aspect ratio of course because it's now taking up the whole device. So here is a infographic you can see the difference the black one is the old screen in terms of the aspect ratio and the size and then the white is the new screen so just a complete change bigger, wider, taller. It's gonna be way more useful and a really, really good upgrade on the outside. It looks like the Z Fold 2 is gonna get the camera components from the S20 Plus. So 12 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel zoom camera. So it's not gonna get the HM1 sensor that the Note 20 Ultra is gonna get or the S20 Ultra had. But that's okay. I think the S20 uh, Plus's camera is very, very solid and really, well, you don't massively need those pixels. Maybe it'd be nice to have, but size constraints in there. I think the S20 Plus is camera. It's gonna be good overall. Also, some feature upgrades we know are coming thanks to some software and code leaks. So firstly is the ability to record in 8K at 21 by nine resolution. And yeah, I guess not many of us are gonna be recording in 8K that much, but it's nice to have that wider resolution just automatically in the camera app on all of the modes. It's a wider aspect ratio that really has become the norm. Also specific to the Z Fold 2, really cool feature, which is the ability to change the which microphone is recording audio. So the, the phone actually has a couple of different microphones. It has an internal one and an external one, and you can choose which one is recording the video. This can be really cool if you're vlogging or you're just shooting some home videos and you want to really focus the audio. Maybe someone in front of you is talking and you wanna record them and not yourself, or you wanna switch it around to yourself. You can do that manually. I think it's a really cool feature on the software side for the Z Fold 2. The battery size is gonna be 4,365 milliamp hours according to leaks and this is about the same size as the original Fold or maybe a, li a little bit smaller even. Uh, as we know, the battery will actually be split up into two battery packs, one slightly bigger, one slightly smaller in both halves of the phone. And really battery size not massively important here. So according to those leaks, the screen is becoming more energy efficient and so the battery that you need is just going to be smaller. So you know Samsung are gonna give us a battery that maybe will last a day or so. They don't really wanna give a bigger battery to last any more than that. It's just they have other things in the phone that they can put in there that will actually uh, give us more features. So the battery and battery life gonna be, I would assume, more or less the same as the original Galaxy Fold. The size not really that important. And when it comes to the price, well, the original rumors we got was that this may actually come a little bit cheaper than the original Fold. And that's because Samsung are on their second generation. They've made some cost savings in terms of production. Production is still pretty small and expensive. The technologies in this phone, especially the screen, are just very new and expensive to put together. Recent leaks we've got from Korea suggest that the price is going to be more or less the same as the original Fold, which I would actually say is a very good thing. The original Fold just doesn't have some of the tech that this one has, the new screen on the inside, bigger screen, bigger outer screen, new cameras, new chipsets in there. Pretty much everything is new and improved, but if the price stays the same, I would say that that's a pretty good thing. We'll have to wait. The 5th of August is apparently when this is launching. Availability will be down the line, maybe a few months away, and we'll have to wait probably until then for the official prices worldwide. But I just really am excited for this product. 
It's just this is lead, leading in the tech industry right now, I would say. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think of the Fold Suit in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe for more like this as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.